Welcome to DC Today. It is Thursday, uh, July 27th. And, uh, you know, yesterday we had um, a, a Fed, uh, Fed policy meeting end and, and lo and behold, they raised rates 25 basis points, which was largely uh, kind of known. The comments uh, yesterday were perceived to be more benign. It was basically just sort of punting on whether they were going to raise rates next quarter or in September, sorry, or not, and just saying they were debt independent. So through the night and into this morning, as that feeling of comfort was kind of felt in markets a little bit more, markets were actually up this morning. We're up over 100 points to start the day, and uh, the narrative just being more of a dovish feeling out of the Fed versus hawkish. And then about 8.30 um, Eastern, we had a whole whole slew of different economic data come out. We had um, uh, GDP numbers come in better than expected. We had jobless claims come in better than expected. We had durable goods orders better than expected. And we had some pending home sales better than expected, which you would think would be good. I, I do. You know, we want good economic numbers, but uh, markets tended to kind of price in the old, you know, good news is bad. And maybe that means the Fed is going to raise rates um, again in September versus yesterday. We thought they weren't. So the Fed expectations, the futures were are now sitting at about a 65, 35, 65, meaning that they don't raise rates in September. Again, that's two months away, 35 that they, that they will. And I think it was more like 75, 25 yesterday. We have more data coming out the next couple of days. There's a CPI print, I'm sorry, a PCE print tomorrow, which uh, I think markets will pay attention to quite a bit. Um, headline is seen moving down from 4.6 to 4.2. So we'll, we'll check that out tomorrow. But um, to unpack today, you know, the, look, GDP was uh, closed at 2.4% uh, uh, up on the quarter. We were expecting something like 1.5, 1.8, something like that in consensus estimates. So quite a bit better than expected. The main culprit was, um, was still the consumer. You know, we have a strong consumer, a healthy balance sheet. Um, we all like to spend. And so that's, that's easy. Uh, but we all have money to spend it, or, or the data suggests that we all have money to spend it, or most people do at least. So a strong consumer, and across the board, uh, services, goods, pretty much everything. Um, real estate was a small detractor at negative you know, two-tenths of a percent, but the consumer was 1.1 of the 2.4, so almost half. Um, so, so good news on GDP. Um, you know, We had a Fed that basically said data dependency as of yesterday, so we, we were looking at more of a, uh, if we're not at peak rates on Fed funds, we're close to it. And then an expanding economy. I wrote this, but I mean, if this is what some are viewing as a potential recession, I guess I'll take it. Um, we had durable goods came in far ahead of expectations. We were looking at a 0.7% print. We got a 4.7% print and I'd note what was noteworthy, but it was pretty broad based. So across the board, um, we had uh, jobless claims came in at 221 versus 235. So less people filing for unemployment and existing claims were also lower. I think it was 1690 versus 1750. Um, so an employment labor market that's still very, he very healthy or, or too healthy, I guess. Too many people have, you know, are looking for not enough jobs that are open. Um, again, that's not necessarily the worst thing um, other than it is technically inflationary, depending. Um, and so that, that's the concern there. Um, pending home sales were up um, uh, on the month, uh, which was better than expected. So, so that's another kind of positive sort of resiliency we're seeing in real estate prices, believe it or not. So like I said, pretty much across the board, we got an A, A, A report card. There really wasn't a lot of negative in, in data. The negative on the day was that stocks were down 237 points. Um, Although, you know, they've been up now for 13 days in a row. So I, I don't even necessarily look at that as bad. I, I think it's healthy to have markets not go in a straight line and have, you know, some some good with the bad along the way. Um, bonds today sold off actually early this morning, meaning before the market opened. I was looking at rates to have to, bonds were rallying. I was looking for rates to come quite a bit down on the day uh, and it went the other way and mostly in the mid and sort of belly of the yield curve call it like a five year to, to, you know, five to 10 year maturities um, bond sold off. So yields went higher. So the yield curve actually steepened a little on the day. Um, we've been over or well over 100 basis points inverted on Tuesdays for 
uh, quite a while kind of flirting with that. And we uninverted a little bit today. Twos were up, I think, 10 basis points. Tens were up 15 uh, on, in yield. So you have a little steepening in yield curve there, although still inverted, 92 basis points. Um, there is several. I think Gunlock was on TV yesterday talking about the fact that historically, with an inverted yield curve, as you get into a recession or really close to a recession, it tends to uninvert. Uh, the, but so that happened a little today. But but I wanted to point out that usually when that happens, it's because short term rates are going up much higher than long term rates. So you have sort of, a, um, you know, a, 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 I'm sorry, short term rates are coming down much faster than longer term rates. So you sort of have a, a steepening yield curve because it's perceived that the Fed is going to start slashing interest rates because the economy is in recession. That's not what we're seeing here. It's the opposite of that. Uh, short term rates were not down today. They were up and they were just up less than long term rates. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's actually a, a good thing. You're looking at strong economic data, which is pricing in longer term inflation expectations being a little bit higher. Um, and it, it's perceived to be a, a growth oriented stature. All that to say, I just wouldn't read into too much what some of these folks are drawing to conclusion on, on the media sometimes. We have, uh, uh, like I said, PCE tomorrow. Um, with another CPI or actually two more CPI prints before uh, the next meeting in September. So a lot can change, um, but, uh, but for now we'll, we'll take some of the good economic data uh, for the day. Um, tomorrow, let's see, we'll have Dividend Cafe in your inbox tomorrow. Um, as always, we're around for any questions. I know David has a nice couple of uh, Q&A answered in today's Ask David section. Um, but with that, I'll let you go in the evening. Um, as always, thanks for listening. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I'd feel pretty pretty good about the economy technically at this stage. We'll see how things shake out over time. But but for now, uh, mostly positive things to, to report, uh, at least in the economic data. So I'll let you go for the evening. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.